and let's give the Lord Jesus a wonderful round of applause. We are going to have a blessed service because Jesus has never stopped blessing us, much to the contrary. Even when Jesus sent his people, his disciples, to go before him to cities where he would be going, he would give specific orders so that they could be doing the work of God. In the book of Luke, in chapter number 10, it says in verse number 3, he was talking to his disciples, uh, the 70 that he sent afterwards, it is written, in Luke chapter 10, verse number 3, Go your way. Behold, I sent you out as lambs among wolves. What well, was Jesus crazy? He knew there were wolves, but still sent the disciples as lambs. No, because when you obey Jesus, it doesn't matter if you go directly to the lion's cave. He's going to be there with you to close their mouths. It doesn't matter if you've been launched into a burning furnace that has been heated seven times more than normal. He's going to be there with you to extinguish the fire's violence. When we're with the name of Jesus, we have this power to bless ourselves and to bless any person there is that needs our blessings. So moving on to verse number four, since we already read three, when he commands them to go as lambs among wolves, and he starts many verses reading and, and, and. So it says, carry neither money bag, knapsack, nor sandals, and greet no one along the road. It was a requirement. Second, but whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this house. Third, and if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest on it. If not, it will return to you. Fourth, and remain in the same house, eating and drinking such things as they give for the laborer is worthy of his wages. Do not go from house to house. Fifth, whatever city you enter and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you. Sixth guideline, and heal the sick there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. I think we have to preach more about the power of God so our people can understand that we serve a living God. And when he was here on earth, he showed attitudes that he had towards diseases. He would go up against them. He would heal the sick. He would make people's understanding open up, and they were healed. And today, we have to take hold of this power, and young people have to have this power. The more mature have to have this power. The elderly have to have this power. Because he said that those who believe in me will do the same works that I do. And if we go forth in his name, why not use the power that heals, that delivers, that blesses, and performs prodigies? It's necessary to believe because God is confirming his word here today. Amen? Now let's go to the real life segment in the name of Jesus. It was January 19, 2002. I had crashed the car and was very nervous. I turned on the TV on Wednesday and watched the Faith Show program. Dr. Suarez preached about the Bible and I liked it. The Lord God touched me that day. I lived in a basement. Today I live in Guadalupe City in a 275 square meters house. Besides the commercial room that is being built up in the front, I've had my own business for 10 years. I'm a carpenter. Walter achieves prosperity after he started sponsoring the Faith Show, but something was missing for the family to achieve complete fulfillment. In 2005, when I got pregnant for the first time, it was in the tube. And I didn't know I was pregnant. I ended up in the hospital. The doctor removed the tube. And I asked the doctor if I would be able to get pregnant again. And the doctor said I would. During this period, I was waiting to get pregnant again. I waited for five years, and I wasn't able to get pregnant again. Then she went to a different doctor, and this doctor made her desperate. The doctor said she couldn't have kids, but she didn't give up, and so she went to see another doctor. And this doctor said it was not exactly the case, that there was an in vitro fertilization treatment she could do. She could be a mother. By that time, I had already registered to do an insemination. But one year had already passed and, and nothing had been done. I said, oh Lord, if you are going to act in my life through the doctors, then you will make them call me so that I can indeed do the treatment. I was just rounding the corner of my house and I heard the phone ringing. 
It was the hospital calling me so that I could start start the treatment. The couple's dream was about to come through. However, they go through a very tough tribulation. Everything was going fine to be a normal delivery. I do not know why, not even the doctor understands why, the moment the baby was about to be born, my daughter started to choke. Then they came to me and said she was in ICU, that she was not showing any vital signs. I didn't believe when I saw her because she, she was on life support. She didn't seem to be a live baby. For me, she was dead already. She had apnea, suffocation, she had seizures, she had to take strong medicine, Gardenol, she had to take many types of strong antibiotics, and she had a heart problem, problem in the kidney. Do not worry about your problem, my brother. And this word came to my heart. She was desperate, and I said, God gave me this word. So I got olive oil and anointed the baby. My wife would anoint the baby and pray, and me too. I anointed her foot and her head and said, you're not going to be healed. You're already healed. The doctors would tell me, your daughter's case is the most difficult one. Your daughter's life is at risk. I looked at her and said, I don't know in what you believe, but I believe in the living God. And from today on, my daughter starts to get better. On the other day when I came back, I asked the same question to the same doctor. Is the baby better or not? Do not lie, I told her. And she answered me, she got a little better. And I told her, God's hand started to work. And then all of the doctors, all of the team were surprised because the baby started to get better quickly. They started to turn off the life support equipment and increase the medicine. Yes, they did that. So now, thanks to God, my daughter is very well. She doesn't have any after effects. Everybody gets surprised because she is, you know, very, very smart. I feel really fulfilled. My daughter is a blessing. I take her to the doctor because I should. But I believe that God is the doctor of the doctors. The child is there. The child is a miracle. She's perfect. She doesn't have any problems. Oh, glory to God. This is so beautiful. Let me talk to the mother. Is everything all yes, right, it sister? Is. Your husband couldn't come? No, he couldn't, Dr. Suarez. He had a work commitment. He couldn't come. Well, what's the name <laughs> of this beautiful child? Rebecca. Rebecca is a living miracle. That's right. <laughs> First because you became pregnant, and then because it seemed to be a lost cause. That's right, Dr. Suarez. Well, you know, at the moment she was born, it was very hard because because I thought, no, I didn't think the enemy wanted to take her away. But I said, you're not going to take my daughter. She was born and I saw her on life support. To me, she was dead. But thank God she's here. Look, the doctors would say to me, Mom, your daughter is going to have after effects. Your daughter won't be normal. And I would look at her and say, Not my daughter. My daughter won't have these problems. Oh, mother, we're talking in, in medical terms that she had this and that. I said, No, my daughter won't have these problems. And she said, How can you be so sure? I said, I have faith that she won't have any after effects. And the proof is right here. She's yes, perfect. Yes, I, I would anoint her, Dr. Suarez, and the doctor would say, Oh, mother, she's getting better. It's a lot of prayer for this child, right? And I said, It's a lot of prayer. <laughs> a lot of it's strong a lot prayers. Of prayer. It's a lot of prayer because every day she is surprising the doctors. Then the doctor said, There's only one problem. She has a bladder problem. Then I said, Does she have a bladder problem? I got the oil and anointed and prayed and said, No, she won't have this bladder problem. Soon after, when I finished praying, she started to pee. Then I called the doctor and said, Look, doctor, look here. The doctor said, Well, mom, your <laughs> baby at, is she's peeing. Looking at me. <laughs> your baby is peeing, mom. Glory to God. And she won't have any after effects, and she didn't. She didn't. Glory Thanks to God. To God. For that. And God is in your house and a constant presence. Present, thanks to God. And a working God. presence. And a working one. Give Jesus a hand of applause. Thank you, Jesus. Those of us who have knowledge about God's Word, we say things that sometimes surprise people, but it's necessary to say them because if we don't assume that, who's going to do that? Now, don't speak from your mind this contact with God since we have the Spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit, we are not here alone, brethren. We have His power within us, and He guides us in what to do and what to say. Being connected with God, there is not, nor will there be, any battle that we cannot win. Standing firm with God will always become winners. Put this into your heart. God has called us and promised that we will be victorious, and will always be. 
Now let's go to the question and answer segment. Dr. Suarez, should we pray one time and wait or ask until we receive the blessing? Always, this question is a good one. We always have to be guided by the Spirit of God. There are times that we have to remain in battle. Other times, we pray one time and wait, and then God works. It's like it is written in the Bible, but those who don't have God's Spirit are not God's children. They don't belong to Him. It's necessary to have it because we feel it. This blessing I'm going to pursue in the name of Jesus, and when we do that, God will bless us. Those who have God's Spirit, at least His presence in their daily lives, know what God wants from them. Next question, please. Dr. Suarez, is it possible that, you know, angels might appear to us nowadays? Well, it is possible. And, and it all depends on the will of God. We shouldn't look forward to, see, to, to seeing angels. I was a young boy, and, you know, when my grandmother passed away, she was a Christian. And I was told a few cases that, you know, of people who had a close contact with God. It's good when you have someone in the family that really serves God. And my aunt arrived on their property and said, Mom, these mangoes are so ugly. And my grandma said, I don't mind because I don't belong to this world. What is that, Mother? You're too young. Yeah, I know. But I was praying over there this morning and a lot of angels came by singing. And for me, that's a sign. That night in her sleep, <sighs> When my grandpa turned to look, she wasn't there anymore. It was only her body. So she went away to be with God. So there are people that do see angels. I can't say because I haven't had that pleasure. If God gives it to me, I'll be very happy. But with Jesus, it doesn't matter if I see angels. I'm always happy in his name. And now let's go uh, to the Open Your Heart segment. Dr. Swides, I've been suffering with my marriage for 31 years because my husband is a very irresponsible man. He's always unemployed and the worst is that he always blames other people. I've assumed all household responsibilities, food, condo fees, bills, and kids' private school. My kids are already suffering with this bad role model. Since my oldest son is having the same attitudes in his marriage, my daughter-in-law is already complaining that she's assuming all household responsibilities. In May, my husband turned 63 years old. Dr. Suarez, please help me in prayer. I need that he starts acting as the head of the family because due to the struggles, I've already thought about splitting up. Well, let's break this up uh, in parts. You've said that you've assumed all household responsibilities. The Bible says that the husband is the chief of the house. He's the head. He's the priest of the house. So if you've assumed all responsibilities, you've assumed this part as well. And you shouldn't ever confess negative things. God, I want to solve it because you've put me as the head since my husband is irresponsible. And I don't want to hurt him. I don't want to offend him. I don't want to lose him. I'm not going to be someone else's wife and I'm not going to do this or that and I'm going to hold on to my home because this is already affecting my son as well. And he is even uh, being attacked by this evil. So I assume the authority right now, a serious prayer, a powerful prayer in which you stand up and say, I'm going to use your power, Lord, and say, devil, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you. I chain all of your action and I paralyze all of your works and I say release my husband, release my son, but a decisive prayer because I speak as God's authority in this house. If you've decided to assume all the financial respects and solve the situation, why not assume before God? And when the husband has this understanding, he puts all of these things to work as they should be working. So you assume now you know, believe and God will be with you in the name of Jesus. And do not confess anything else, because if not, you know, you're opening the door for the devil. And there is no what if no, no devil. Because as many promises there are from God, all of them you have in God, yes. And you may go and God will be with you and he is going to give you your victory in the name of Jesus. Let's go now to the book of Proverbs chapter 3. I've started uh, talking about this two services ago, talking about this text. Let's go to verse number five where it reads, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. 
Do not trust with only half of your heart or 90% of it. Do you want to solve an issue? An issue that is of your concern, of your family, something that is bothering you, something that is bothering your life. My brethren, you must trust the Lord with all your heart. What is to trust the Lord with all your heart? Whatever it is that whenever you read the Bible or when you listen to a sermon, it illuminates you, makes you feel that that word is specific for you. Get that word and trust in it. Because with this word, as the disciples said, Jesus said, cast your net to the right. Peter asked, Lord, we've been working all night and we didn't catch anything. But upon your word, I'll cast the net. And they cast it and the net was about to tear apart with so many fish that was in it. So you continue seeking God, seeking God, praying, going to church, reading the Bible, paying attention. And when you understand that God spoke to me, brethren, at that moment, it is as God said, I'm ready to do great works in your life. Whatever you felt from the Bible that is yours, you are going to have to determine. But do it with all of your heart, as I said to that lady who wrote the letter. She has to assume now the position of leader of her house, since she's supporting it financially and doing everything, and also spiritually, now that she has become God's prince or God's princess in that house, the one who commands, the one who, uh, uh, who makes things happen, that orders evil to go away. Do it with all of your heart. And it continues, and lean not on your own understanding. Because brethren, when you think you know something and lean on it, you may not even pay attention that the enemy is behind what is happening. Let's go now to the second book of Samuel, chapter number 11. In 2 Samuel, chapter number 11, let's read the first verse. You're going to see here who King David, a man about whom God said, he's according to my heart, he fell and fell violently and full of shame. 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 1. It happened in the spring of that year, at the time when kings go out to battle, that David sent Job and his servants with him, and all Israel, and they destroyed the people of Ammon and besieged Rabbah. But David remained at Jerusalem. He didn't understand that all of the laziness he felt was a work from the devil. And write down what I'm going to say. The day that you feel like, today I'm not going to go to church because it's raining, it's too cold, it's too hot, there's a game or something else. What should you do? Get up and go to church. My brethren, there's an operation from hell to put you in shame. It's the devil's plan. If David had gone, what happened wouldn't have happened. Laziness, you know, sometimes you think you just can't make it this time. I'm not going. Stand up and go. That's the enemy trying to harm you. And now let's read verse 2. Then it happened for him, because in hell that was already set to happen. One evening that David arose from his bed and walked on the roof of the king's house, and from the roof he saw a woman bathing, and the woman was very beautiful to behold. Nothing happens by chance. He probably had had a big lunch, his stomach was heavy, he felt sleepy. Where was Israel? Where was his army? Fighting against the people of Ammon that used to harm the Israelites. And where was the king? The supreme commander of Israel's armed forces, he who was you, oh, you, the, the highest authority. He was sleeping while they were going. And a person that sleeps during you know, uh, the time of harvest or the time of sowing, during working hours, this person isn't doing a good thing. God created the day for us to walk and the night for us to rest. Unless we have some professional motives, we should never invert this order. Whenever people start with this inversion, something evil is happening in their lives. But I have a health problem, so pray to God. Search for God and say, God, I need to enter in the, the normality. This lack of attention for the few things in life is going to be bad for you. He woke up and didn't even pray for his army. He went for a walk. 
And when he saw on the other side in the other balcony, and of course he saw a woman bathing. Of course it was the devil doing that, because nobody bathes in public. So she was there exactly as the devil wanted to work to make him fall. And instead of looking at her and turning away and saying, God, I'm wrong, I need to react, he kept observing. And the woman was very beautiful to behold. And what's the problem with being beautiful? She wasn't his wife. He shouldn't, you know, be looking at someone else's wife. And then what happened? So David sent and inquired about the woman. And someone said, Is this not Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? Then David sent messengers and took her, and she came to him, and he lay with her, for she was cleansed from her impurity, and she returned to her house. After she sent a message saying she was pregnant, David became desperate. He planned the murdering, the assassination, the homicide of her husband. He died. And then for David, everything was fine. Because, you know, the plot here is worth reading afterwards. He was trying to get rid of the baby, sent Uriah home. He didn't go. Then he made Uriah drink. He ordered him again, but Uriah didn't go. Everything David wanted to do, then he sent Uriah in front of the battle and he died. Then David was free. And he even got her as his wife. So Nathan the prophet came and told the story about a man that was very rich and robbed the lamb of another man. And David got very angry. This folk has to die, but you are this man. God told me to tell you. He realized and repented, but then Nathan told him a word that we should never have to hear in our lives. The first word is in chapter 12, verse number 10. Do not play with God's justice. Do not play with the truth. Fear what God says. This is the prophet Nathan speaking. Now therefore, the sword shall never depart from your house, because you have despised me. You have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. Was it all worth doing, David? No. Right afterward, there was an incest. One son abused uh, uh, his sister. Then there was another son that killed this first son that abused the sister. And then this son tried to get his reign. The sword never departed from his house. Brethren, don't wish anything from the enemy. The price to be paid is too high. And there are people listening to me that know exactly what this is that is making this person suffer for such a long time. What do I have to do? Go back to God and get back on the right path. And now let's read verse 14 that for me is as strong as this one we just heard. The first part of the verse. However, because by this deed you have given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme, only this, the person that took part in any illicit act, when they talk about Jesus, what? And tell the story. For me, God is nothing and so on. It's a life that is going to get lost because a son or a daughter of God acted in the wrong way. Sometimes the person even hopes that this person disappears so that the one that acted wrong can say I'm clean. That's not the way. You can only get clean following God's guidance. Without God's guidance, you remain in the hand of the devil. The worst, besides what we've just seen, is that he gave conditions so that the Lord's name could be blasphemed. And it's no use praying. But you have to go away. The devil doesn't care. He will just remain there uh, dancing around and around you. I'm not going to dance because it'll look weird. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I'm a terrible dancer. And the devil does this and the person is unable to rebuke it. But why can't the person rebuke it? Because the person gave the devil conditions. Regret and go back to where you fell before it's too late. Let me pray now. God, I've summarized this sermon so much, but I wasn't supposed to preach because other times I've already preached about this subject, only to tell the two serious cases that David's sin brought to his house and to your house, to his house, the sword. God, only wrong things happened to your house, 
your name was blasphemed because of his act. God, may this never, ever happen to my people. And if it's already happened, don't allow this person to have peace until this person repents because this person needs to become clean. Yes, this person needs to get rid of this demon that is consuming this person's guts, that is destroying that family's happiness, that is attacking a son or a daughter. God, please come to this person's rescue. I'm going to bless your people now. In the name of Jesus, I say, devil, get your hand out of this life because this person has made a decision. In the name of Jesus, be blessed and amen.